Hey guys, Martin here from DSing again with another video. And it's a follow up video on our introduction to callbacks. Um, today we will specifically talk about data enrichment um, and how we can uh, get DSing to call APIs in between jobs and um, combine the resulting data and send it off to a final destination. So by now you should be familiar with callbacks and the required data structures. Uh, if not, please watch the introduction to callbacks video. Um, so we'll start off with our trusty WooCommerce. So this is my WooCommerce and products in there. We have the Star Wars DVD and a Magento 2 configurable product. In this video we will look at uh, the Star Wars DVD product specifically. Um, we will assume that we have a file which have just the ID numbers, the product ID numbers in there. So in this case it's 225. And we need to call WooCommerce, um, get the additional details of the product by the ID, and um, s consolidate the data and send it off to a final destination. So first of all we need some source data which will hold the product ID for us <coughs> and uh, we'll create a simple uh, upload in here so we'll have, an, uh, we'll have a JSON file with the product ID in it I'll save that and we need to get it into WooCommerce somehow um, so in our WooCommerce system we'll create an endpoint and we call it get product by ID and this will be a destination and we can choose either the API or the advanced API um, in this case I will choose the standard API the data layout will be as per the source so we'll have just one field in there and we will call it product ID and we'll save that now to the important thing so how do we actually get data from WooCommerce uh, based on ID product data based on ID if we look at the WooCommerce RESTful API documentation uh, we'll have products in here and we can view a product uh, based on some kind of ID and this is the resource URL uh, which you need to call so from my WooCommerce um, I'll put the URL of my WooCommerce in followed by the resource URL which is this one without the ID the ID is a dynamic number which WooCommerce expects and so we need to make desync to actually grab the ID from the source data coming in and replace it in the URL and make the call. <coughs> so how do we do this? Um, we have the ability to uh, add stuff into this URL um, and it's based on the data layout of the API endpoint um, and it's using the curly bracket uh, notation so if I insert curly brackets in here and put a field name into um, inside the brackets in our case I believe it was the product ID which we used let me save the settings and open it up again yeah it is so um, what you basically need to put into the curly brackets um, to make it dynamic is the um, the name of the field in the data layout in this case it's the product ID um, it's using the tree key notation so if you had object um, which would be called root for example um, and the product ID underneath that you would insert in the curly brackets root dot product underscore ID um, <clears throat> so this is how we actually use the source data um, and then use the value 
of the product ID in the URL dynamically and get desync to call that URL and grab some more data. Um, the methods, even though it's destination, um, there's a get option and that's specifically for callbacks and data enrichment. So we will use it in this case. So we'll have destination API endpoint. Uh, we're substituting the product ID with the value dynamically and it's a get method. We're pulling more data out of WooCommerce at this destination endpoint. So we'll save the settings. That's the first step done. So we'll, we'll create a link between these two. Um, that's my get product data by ID job. And we will create a new mapping. It's just the one field there. Get the product by ID map. And we'll map the product ID in there. So that's the first part. Um, now, how do we actually get the data out? So we need some kind of source endpoint. Um, it can be anywhere. It doesn't need to be underneath the WooCommerce. Um, we will basically set up a callback from this job onto this um, source API endpoint and connect that source API endpoint with the final destination. Um, so in this case, I'll just add an endpoint here, call it um, enriched product. Uh, it is a source and I'll just use the standard API for now. And we need to fill out some settings. So um, these, in this case, because the source data are coming from another job, um, we don't actually need to specify the URL and methods theoretically. However, desync requires some kind of URL or methods um, otherwise the job will not run. So we can put whatever URL in here. I can put non-existent URL.io in there. Um, methods, only method option is get and save the settings. <clears throat> Again this will never be called in our case because basically the source data are coming in through callback from this job. So this get call will be completely ignored. Um, and if you watched my previous introduction to callback video, you should be familiar with the, um, the data object and the callback object. So we need to put these in. We'll have the data object and we'll have the callback object here. And just for mapping purposes, let me just add extra field underneath the data in here, save the settings. We will modify this data layout later based on the data um, which are actually coming in. So we will run it first, the job, um, and then we will basically model the data layout based on the actual data. Um, we need some kind of final destination here, so again, I'm just using manual download for um, for testing. So that's my final download, which would hold the enriched product data in here. Okay, just for now, uh, we can add a test field in there. We will adjust this later on when we actually have some data coming in, and we need to create a job. So we'll create a link between the two final enriched data. And we'll create a new map. Final enriched data map. And we will map that only field available to us at this stage. Okay, final piece of the puzzle. Um, we need to get the name of the job, final enriched data, and set up the callback. 
So let's go final enrich data, add that to our setup, and we should be good to go. Uh, ready to test. So let's run this, see what do we get. The file I'm using is a simple JSON file. It's got the product ID in there and it's got um, a number 225 in there which corresponds with that um, product we're after in WooCommerce. That's the ID 225. Um, nothing else is in there. So let me drop the file into the job and let's try to run it. <coughs> And we got some file back, obviously, because the mapping is just test mapping for now. Um, you can see that it's empty, the test, but it ran successfully. So what we can do now, we can have a look at the final job and specifically on the source data, and we can model the data layout of this receiving endpoint uh, based on those. So we'll download the source data and you can see it's JSON data uh, with the data and callback objects in there. So let me just format it for you and um, JSON formatter. So you can see that um, in the callback, that's the original data from the job where we set up the callback and it's got that product ID 225 in it. And in the data object, um, you get the result from the get call and desync substituted the um, the ID in the URL with the 225 and uh, WooCommerce returned all the metadata of this product. Um, so now we can actually grab the layout of the data, go back to the API endpoint, um, clear this and we'll use the editor based in the JSON, hit OK, and we'll save it. We want to override the map. The map was based on the data layout which we had there previously, so we definitely want to modify that. And we'll look at the final download. We want to make sure that we actually map the correct data, so set this as an array and what do we want to actually grab so from the product we can grab the title the status skew and the price for example so if we add these fields in or we'll add the title status skew and price. We'll save the details. Again, it's been used in the mapping, so these things alerts me. Um, and you can see that the map is all messed up. Um, all we can all we can do is uh, regenerate map. That will fix it for us and we can finally map it. So we have the title, status, queue and price. So map this, we'll save the settings and let's try to rerun the job and we'll see what we get. So if we run the job again with the same file, uh, let me find this, there we go. Okay, and we got a file back we look at what came in, you can see that we have the title Star Wars 6, status published, SKU, and the price in there. So if I just format it a little bit for you, yeah, you can see that um, Desync basically received the, um, the ID of 225 in this destination. Um, API endpoint, it substituted the product ID with the value of 225, it got some additional data 
and the, the callback, the product ID data, and the actual data which we got were passed into this enriched product job, and we just mapped the four fields which finally got out. So that's pretty much how you can enrich uh, data using callbacks. Um, I think the important takeaway in here is um, this dynamic um, replacement of fields uh, inside a URL. So this can be anything, any field, any name of the field um, from the data layout of that API endpoint. So if I, for example, had um, an object in here, um, and let's let's call it an object. Um, and the product ID was underneath that object. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry, my trackpad is horrible. Um, let me save that. So, um, what you would do in the URL? It's that dot notation, the object notation, so you would do object dot product ID and that would actually grab the value um, from this field when this runs and substitute it in the URL. Um, I hope that's clear and helpful and I'll be back with more videos for you shortly. Alright, bye.